Storytelling is one of the most important and foundational aspects of great email marketing. But like any copywriter or business owner who writes their own emails will tell you, after a while, the originality well really starts to dry up and you're left wondering, how can I come up with new story ideas? In this video, I'm gonna give you my favorite tips for sourcing great stories to use in your email marketing and how to make almost any story completely relevant to what you have to say in your marketing, so keep watching. Hey Posse, what's up? It's Alex, and yes, this video is gonna be so much fun. We are talking about one of my all-time favorite topics, storytelling and email marketing. I love writing engaging emails that are fun to read by incorporating lots and lots of juicy stories. So fun fact, back when I was a freelance copywriter, emails were kind of my jam. Finding interesting stories, pieces of history, or just random facts to incorporate into my emails became something I was kind of known for. And after being in this industry for 15 years, yes, 15 years, I have come to notice something. If you can tell great stories in your emails, you'll have higher open rates, higher click-through rates, higher conversions, and less unsubscribes because people love stories. And even if your audience doesn't buy from you right away, telling a great story will at least keep them engaged and reading your emails and coming back for more. But listen, this isn't just from my own personal experience. The effects of storytelling have been widely studied. So here's what the science says. Stories are more believable and persuasive. You can debate facts, you can disagree with opinions, but hey, you cannot argue with someone's story. It's their story, right? So let me give you an example of just how powerful this can be. Save the Children is an international charity organization that connects donors with children in developing countries. They realized they needed a better way to persuade and convert potential donors. So in 2007, Carnegie Mellon researchers tested two different brochures that were asking for donations. One brochure listed a whole bunch of facts, something like this, and the other presented a vivid personal story along with an accompanying paragraph, something like this. Now, both versions were enclosed in envelopes containing $5 bills, which were then given to the Carnegie Mellon students. So some of the students got the fact-based brochure that listed a bunch of stats on food shortages, droughts, and other catastrophes in the area. And then some other students got the storytelling version, which followed a more emotionally charged approach. It said, Rokia, a seven-year-old girl from Mali, Africa, is desperately poor and faces a threat of severe hunger or even starvation. Her life will be changed for the better as a result of your financial gift. With your support and the support of other caring sponsors, Save the Children will work with Rokia's family and other members of the community to help feed her, provide her with education, as well as basic medical care and hygiene education. And what was the result? You can probably guess. The students who received just the facts version donated an average of $1.14 out of their $5. Whereas the students who received the storytelling version donated donated $2.38, over twice as much. But here is another twist. In a third test, of course, students were given that same $5 and a different brochure from Save the Children. This one told Rokia's story, but it also included stats about persistent drought, shortfalls, crop production, and famine, just like the original fact-based one did. Now, while the students who had read Rokia's story alone donated an average of $2.38, those that read the story plus the data version only donated $1.43. So what that means is a short but powerful story and nothing else made the biggest impact. Listen, facts are important, they really are. But if you really wanna move someone to take action, tell them a story. Stories are also more memorable. So be honest, do you remember what you ate for breakfast three days ago? No, probably not. You'd have to really think about it, right? The human mind is conditioned to forget unimportant information like this because if we remembered every single moment of every single day, there would be like way too much going on in those brains of ours, right? So our brains have adapted to be more selective with what we remember. So I hate to say it, but that well-researched fact 
packed email that you just wrote to your list about all the very logical reasons why they need to buy what you're selling. Yeah, that probably went in one ear and out the other. But there is a lot of evidence that says stories are more memorable than facts alone. According to the famed cognitive psychologist Jerome Bruner, the human mind is about 22, 22 times more likely to remember facts if those facts are part of a story. And according to a London Business School study, storytelling can drive the retention rate of your audience by up to as much as 65 to 70%. And according to an experiment conducted by Stanford University professor Chip Heath, 63% of students remembered a story-based presentation, while only 5% could remember a single stat from a fact-based presentation. So why is that? Simply, we remember what we feel. In a 2017 Harvard Business Publishing article, Lanny Peterson notes, scientists are discovering that chemicals like cortisol, dopamine, and oxytocin are released in the brain when we're told a story. <laughs> like, those are some good storytelling drugs. And those three chemicals help us to better retain information, make an emotional connection, and experience genuine empathy. So if you are trying to influence, engage, teach, inspire, or sell to others, yes, 100,000 million percent, you should be telling a story. Before you freak out and you're like, Alex, WTF, I am a business owner, not a novelist or a screenwriter. How am I supposed to craft epic stories that do all of this? Well, I am going to show you. And the best news is you do not have to be a novelist or a professional writer or an English lit major to tell great stories. In fact, storytelling is a lot simpler and easier than you probably think. And it all comes down to one maxim, show, don't tell. Don't just tell your audience something, right? Like, and then, and then, and then. You wanna communicate your message through an engaging, personal, real life demonstration. And luckily for you, that is exactly what I teach here right on my channel. Not just how to connect through email, but how to make all of your content, copy and marketing just more relevant and relatable and effective. So if you want more videos like this one on storytelling and marketing, be sure to subscribe to my channel below and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when my next video goes live. All right, now with all of that in mind, where can you come up with great stories to use in your emails? and how how can you incorporate them into your messaging without it feeling like fake or forced or just like awkward, right? So here are my top story sources. The first, the most obvious, your real life experiences. The stories your audience will always love the most will always be personal stories from your life experiences. Listen, your audience wants to relate to you human to human. And these stories are super easy to source because they are all about you, but I know it can be hard to really dig up stories. So here are some questions that you can ask yourself to get your gears turning and come up with great personal story ideas. What is the biggest lesson you learned lately? What was an unexpected challenge you've recently faced? When was a time that you almost gave up completely? When was a time that you took a major risk? You could share wins, you know, big or little that you're really proud of, lessons you learned from your parents or mentors or other influential people in your life. These can also be professional or personal stories. It is totally up to you. And I recommend a mixture of both. Remember, people don't just want to know what you do, but they want to know who you are. And don't fall into that trap that thinking every email you write has to be super valuable in terms of sharing like tips or strategies, show them who you are. Feel free to share funny and totally random things like this email that I wrote to my list. A couple of weeks ago, I was in an Uber in San Diego headed to the airport after an event. Now, normally I don't mind the casual conversations that take place in Ubers. In fact, I usually love them. Listening to stories from strangers, hearing funny anecdotes, getting life advice on love, friendships, or the best place to eat in town. But on on this day, I had just finished speaking at an event and I was all talked out. So I pulled the classic, I'm not looking for small talk move, you know the one, phone out, earbuds in, no eye contact. But this particular Uber driver was one chatty fellow and he was not picking up the vibes I was putting down. He was determined to make small talk. So I reluctantly engaged in the usual pleasantries. What are you in town for? What do you do? Oh, how did you get into that? Then there was a moment or two of silence before he presumptively asked, so how many cats and dogs do you have? Huh? I did not see that one coming. I replied, how do you know that I have either? He said, well, you strike me as a dog and a cat person, you know, equal love for all pets. 
And now I'm really starting to enjoy the conversation. So I opened up a little and I said, well, I have one dog, but you're right, I do love cats. I also grew up with a bunch of chickens and rabbits. And that's when he gave me the strangest compliment I have ever received. <laughs> he said, yeah, you give me farmyard vibes for sure. I assume what he was trying to tell me was that I strike him as an empathetic being who just loves all living things, not that I smell like a farm. Either way, I found it hilarious and the conversation will live on forever in my memories. So what does this strange compliment have to do with why I'm writing you today? Oh, there's the pivot. <laughs> well, when I started the Copy Posse in early 2020, I started it based on that exact philosophy. No, not farmyard vibes, although I did almost name the Copy Posse the Copy Coop. You know, like chicken coop. <laughs> why? Don't ask. Thank God that idea never fully hatched. <laughs> LOL, okay, I'll stop. My brand was built from the ground up based on one universal principle, empathy. I've built my brand a lot differently than other businesses out there. From day one, I wanted my brand to feel different. I wanted it to be about my message first, the change I was fighting for, the heart-centered humans I could help, and the impact I wanted to make. I wanted my brand to have a voice before I added in all the marketing bells and whistles. I've always believed that connection should come before conversion, and if that meant I couldn't scale as fast as I could, so be it. But the crazy thing is, I did. The Copy Posse has grown into a multi seven figure business with a community of over 300,000 rad humans from all around the world. I've had the honor of presenting at AdWorld four times. I've been a speaker at the Traffic and Conversion Summit. And most recently, I was named 2022 Marketer of the Year. And I did that without following all the typical rules of marketing. Instead, I followed a ridiculously simple four step process. And in this week's video, I am breaking it down for you. Then you can see I linked to the YouTube video. So see how that was nothing here huge, no major lesson being shared, no mind-blowing takeaways. It was a funny random story that happened to me and it was too good not to use, so I used it and I found a way to connect it to the main point of my email. All right, the next way you can find stories that aren't about you are community stories. So here you can share stories about your friends, your network, your audience, and your customers. So this could mean sharing a screenshot of a conversation, a comment, or an email that you got from one of your customers, or it could mean that you actually literally tell a story about them. Of course, with this one, you do need to get their permission to share that screenshot or their story. Or if it's a screenshot without permission, you can always blur or redact out any you know personal information so that no one can identify them. I do this a lot in my Sunday celebration emails, but I also share community stories in like a little bit sneaky your ways too, like this email that I wrote about a real person I know. I told a story about something that really happened to her, but I changed her name and a few details of the story, but it was really rooted in truth. I just made it a story. So rather than using that story as a case study, I used it as a fictional story and it was really meant to inspire my readers and help them relate to the main character. All right, so those are two pretty obvious places to source stories, but that's not the only way. There are thousands of other stories out there that you can use in your email marketing and and thanks to the internet and streaming services, it has never been easier to find amazing stories at literally the touch of a button. Yes, the third place is real life events. So search news articles, documentaries, and even history archives. I once used a story that I read about in National Geographic as the lead-in story to my email. The article was about a bunch of floating feet that were found in the Pacific Northwest, which is exactly where I lived. So I used the amazing hook of the article as the basis of my storytelling in that email, and then I go on to break down the three things the article did well from a copywriting perspective. Then I link to a YouTube video where I share my favorite copywriting exercise. But also, don't feel like you have to use an article that's trending online right now in this exact moment. If you have a great story idea for your email, then use Google to help you find a great story. So you're thinking first about what a good story could be, and then you're finding it. So on Thanksgiving a few years ago, I really wanted to incorporate a great thing Thanksgiving story that just happened to have something to do with the topic of the email, which was email marketing, <laughs> which is a pretty specific prerequisite. So of course, nothing I found while browsing news articles or headlines was really hitting the mark. So I simply typed into Google, Thanksgiving email saved a life. Don't ask me why I typed that into Google, but I just did. I wanted to see what would come up. And the first thing that popped up was this article from USA Today in 2015 about 
Yep, an email sent on Thanksgiving weekend that actually saved someone's life. In the email, I simply recount the story in my own words and then go on to talk about how powerful your subject line can be. Now, if you made it this far in this video, then you're probably wondering, okay, great, but how do I tie these stories into my message? Like, how do I tell a random story and then like pivot to the product, right? Because that can feel a little bit awkward. Great question and an important question too, because storytelling won't do all the incredible things we talk about earlier if you can't make it relevant to what you're trying to say to your audience, right? It's just like a random story. But luckily, it's actually incredibly simple to do this. And all you have to do is A, tell the story, B, make your point, no matter how unrelated, and then C, go back and add one or two more sentences that really connect them together. It's as simple as that. And of course, you saw me do it in the example earlier in this video. I think a lot of people tend to overthink this, but it's really not that hard. You know, in the Thanksgiving email saved a life story. I spent the whole beginning of the email talking about the amazing story. I don't try to make parallels between the story and the point that I'm trying to get to later. I don't try to make it about something it's not. And I don't draw some deep philosophical epiphany. I just tell the story because if it was interesting to me, it's probably going to be interesting to my readers. Then after I tell the story, I make my point, which in this case was posing a question, what makes a good subject line? Then I go in to write something very brief, connecting it to the piece. So it was all of this a coincidence, a Thanksgiving miracle, or just a damn good subject line? If you ask me, it must have been a pretty damn good subject line. See how easy that was? Now go out there and try it for yourself. And if you want help learning how to write amazing emails that connect and sell, then check out my email marketing course, Own the Inbox. It's where I share my whole email marketing playbook with you. I'm talking about all of my favorite email frameworks that you can customize and send. I will link to that in the description box below, and I will see you next week with a brand new video. Until then, I'm Alex. Ciao for now. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out the next one from me right here. And you can click right here to get a free gift. My email list is the number one driver of profits in my business by a long shot. And if you've been dying to start your own email list, but don't know how, this video is for you. I'm gonna take you through the entire process from start to finish.